Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone, to uh, our 2022 graduation ceremony for the Michael E. DeBakey Department of Surgery. Of course, this is a long-standing tradition, and of course, it was interrupted over the last several years because of COVID. We had a small event um, last year, but it is wonderful to see everyone back. I'd like to uh, welcome our families, our parents, our relatives, uh, guests of our um, distinguished uh, graduates. Um, this is actually my 10th graduation ceremony here, here at Baylor, and um, so start thinking about benchmarks and relatives and uh, relative um, improvements. And I, I would say, based upon our graduates this year, with all due respect to our prior graduates and our graduates, about a dozen who are now members of our faculty, Dr. Vasudevan, others, um, I think we finally got it right. We are so fortunate to have such an amazing group of uh, graduating residents. They are all spectacular. I was speaking to Dr. Yanoff early, and it seems to me this is really the first year that we had no bouts of uh, senioritis this past year, uh, which is a very endemic to this area. And um, I, I know that we are going to um, look upon our graduates for many, many years to come with great pride, uh, sense of accomplishment, and really just uh, the honor of having uh, helped uh, train them and bring them along. Uh, gonna be, we're going to hear a lot of, a lot of uh, reminiscences and uh, inflections about, about our graduates, uh, so I will not um, uh, belabor my comments, but I, again, I want to offer my thanks, my congratulations, and my great appreciation for everything our graduates and their families have brought to our family. With that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Scott, our Vice Chair for Education and our annual Master of Ceremonies. Brad, thank you and welcome. Uh, welcome to probably one of the most important days of your life. Uh, congratulations on finishing such a significant portion of your life. Some of you are released uh, and able to go practice. Some of you are going to train a little bit longer, which is great. I highly recommend it. Uh, and we're going to hear from everyone. Uh, please come up, you know, and uh, enjoy the moment, enjoy the time. Uh, and I know everybody has dinner arrangements, correct? Yes, restaurant, 7, 7.30 maybe? Okay. So our first uh, uh, introductions are the people that do all the work. Um, these are the, our administrative team. They're mainly sitting down here. A couple are spread out. These are the head cat herders. Uh, for all the residencies. Uh, so we have 184 residents. You can imagine trying to keep them straight with parking and where they're going to live and what rotation they're going to go on to. Holly Shillstone, thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jay Chambers, which I think she stepped out. Jay, uh, are there in the back? Some I see a couple in the back. Jay runs in his our, our Residency supervisor and runs general surgeries with helps with Sabrina, which is about in the back. Kristen Woods for pediatric surgery, surgical critical care, and vascular surgery. Amy Silva, which I saw her run in some direction to go fix something uh, for thoracic. Morgan for plastic surgery, and Caitlin Williams, uh, new to our team and running our student program, which is incredibly important to our department. Joseph Caselli, I'm director of the uh, Aortic Fellowship Program. Aortic surgery at Baylor College of Medicine has been a mainstay uh, going back to the days of Dr. DeBakey and extended with uh, Dr. E. Stanley Crawford. Almost all of the faculty in those days uh, did a lot of the aortic surgery, but uh, Stanley Crawford was godfather of the thoracic abdominal uh, uh, surgery. In addition, Dr. Cooley had a special interest in aortic surgery and the combination of them carried out most of the uh, major uh, firsts in, uh, in aortic surgery. For many, many, many years, going back decades, we've had an aortic fellowship. Our graduating fellow this year is Dr. Uh, Jaskaran uh, uh, Sani. We call him Jazz. Uh, he's actually uh, uh, from India. His hometown is uh, Nawanshar, uh, India. And he went to medical school at the Seth G.S. Medical College in Mumbai, but did his general surgery at the uh, LTM Medical College in Mumbai. We've had uh, a great many of outstanding aortic fellows over the years. Many of them have gone on to uh, run major programs uh, uh, in North America as well as around the world. I would put uh, Dr. Sani up with the very best of these. He did an absolutely terrific job for the year. Uh, he really set a very high standard in both the uh, technical expertise he has in uh, clinical surgery, 
as well as in the critical care of, of a great deal of uh, a great number of uh, extremely critically ill patients, which she's taking care of with really first class care. Following graduation, uh, he's going to continue to do some additional training in general surgery at the Bronx Care uh, Health System. And we're uh, very, very proud that he's uh, one of our graduates. He is so good, he is operating right now. <laughs> so we'll move on to our uh, next. Hello. I'm Dr. Kenneth Slayal, Chief of the Cardiothoracic Transplantation Division and the Program Director of Cardiothoracic Transplantation Fellowship at the Texas Heart Institute and the Baylor College of Medicine. I'm excited and happy to announce that Dr. Dalawa has successfully completed his one-year Cardiothoracic Transplant Fellowship at the, at the Texas Institute and the Baylor College of Medicine. Dr. Dalawa has joined us. Dr. Dalawa joined us in July 2021 after he completed his cardiothoracic fellowship training at Texas Heart Institute. He wanted to learn and specialize in cardiothoracic transplant. He joined us at the right time. There were a lot of positive changes happened in our division during this time. We have seen historical growth in our lung transplant volume. We have started use of the new generation of left ventricular assist device. And have, we have consistently generated um, one of the best heart transplant outcomes in the history. Dr. Dalawa worked very hard. He took good care of our transplant patients. He met all the criteria to graduate from this program. Dr. Dalawa will start another cardiothoracic fellowship program at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. I wish him all the success in his future career. Congratulations. I'm extremely excited and happy to announce that Dr. Michael Keckuk has successfully completed his one year minimum invasive cardiac surgery fellowship at Baylor College of Medicine. Dr. Keckuk joined us in August 2021 after he completed his cardiothoracic surgery residence training from New York University cardiac surgery program. He wanted to learn and specialize in minimally invasive cardiac surgery. And I think the time was perfect for him to join us, to train with us. In the past year, we have seen rapid growth in our minimally invasive and robotic cardiac surgery program. Dr. Kaka came with solid clinical knowledge and skills to meet all the challenges of this new subspecialty. He works very hard and takes good care of his patients. He has contributed a lot to our record growth in the robotic cardiac surgery in the past year. He has done an excellent job. Michael, thank you for your hard work. Dr. Kekik will join Baylor College of Medicine and Cardiothoracic Surgery Faculty and work as our partners. Congratulations, Dr. Kekik. Job well done. Dr. Kekik and Dr. Liao. I know I saw you earlier. Where's Dr. Liao? There you are. Next is our uh, cardiac fellows. I'm Joseph Caselli, and I'm thoracic director fellows. of the uh, Thoracic Residency Program for Baylor College of Medicine and Texas Heart Institute. It's one of the oldest and one of the more prestigious uh, residency programs we actually have at Baylor. We have one general thoracic individual that's part of a general thoracic tract, which focuses mainly on lung, esophagus, et cetera. And then we have three others that uh, focus uh, primarily on uh, cardiac as well as thoracic. It's all part of the same training uh, uh, program. The first is uh, Nabil Ghul. Uh, Nabil is our general thoracic uh, uh, track resident. Um, he's from Pakistan and uh, did his medical school uh, uh, in Karachi, Pakistan. But his general surgery residency was actually at the University at Buffalo. And his, um, he did a surgical critical care uh, program at Washington University in uh, St. Louis. Um, he's really accomplished quite a lot while he's been here, which include uh, being the recipient of the AATS Foundation Thoracic Surgical Robotics Fellowship and a recipient of the AATS Foundation Honoring Our Men Mentors Program. 
Both of these are very, very prestigious accomplishments on his part. After graduation, uh, he's going to uh, join as a thoracic surgeon, the Baptist Health, Louisville, Kentucky, Baptist Health uh, Floyd uh, uh, programs. The next individual is Abraham uh, Katz. Uh, Dr. Katz um, is part of our uh, general cardiac uh, and thoracic uh, program. He's from Great Neck, New York, uh, went to medical school at uh, Sunny Downstate, and then did his general surgery at uh, Montefiore Medical Center. He's a fantastic clinical surgeon. He's very compassionate. He's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. And we're very, very honored to have him uh, join us for the Baylor College of Medicine Aortic Fellowship Program following his uh, graduation. He's gonna be with us another year, and I consider that a win-win, both for him and for us. The next individual is, is uh, Krishna Patel. Uh, Dr. Patel is from uh, Bohemia, uh, New York. Uh, he went to medical school at the uh, New Jersey Medical School and did his general surgery at uh, Rot Rochester. Again, he's been one of the truly fantastic uh, thoracic residents we've had over the last number of years. Uh, he's, he's technically very gifted. He's been a, a very, very pleasant individual to work with. And he's always there, uh, first one, top of the job. After graduation, he's going to uh, join a group in Syracuse, New York, at the St. Joseph Hospital. The next individual is Vivek Patel. Uh, Vivek is actually uh, a native Texan. Uh, his hometown is uh, Dallas, Texas. He went to medical school at Texas A&M College of Medicine. And he's one of our own. He did general surgery at uh, uh, Baylor College of Medicine. He com after completing his uh, general surgery training at Baylor, he did two years in the laboratory for cardiac regeneration with our chairman of the department, Dr. Todd Rosengard. We're really honored that he's going to stay here at uh, Baylor. We're beginning a new program at St. Luke's Woodlands Hospital for cardiothoracic surgery. And uh, it's uh, really, again, a win-win that uh, he's going to take that position at uh, St. Luke's Woodlands and help us initiate that very, very important program. Hello, I'm Vivek Patel, and I just had a few words to to, to say, you know, and uh, and so um, interestingly, I started residency ten years ago on this day on Dr. Caselli's service on June 23rd. So, of course, I was terrified at the time, and uh, so you know, but uh, everything ended up working out, and you know, I just wanted to share some thoughts. So um, me and my family are, are, you know, very thankful to have stayed here at Baylor for 10 years, and we're beyond excited for the next opportunity, you know, um, and so expectations are high, but uh, I'll represent us well, and uh, I'll, make, I'll make everyone proud. So we're very much looking forward to it. It's, uh, and it's honestly difficult to express my gratitude over the last 10 years, you know, I've had amazing mentors in general surgery, cardiac surgery, and thoracic surgery. So, you know, and after reflecting back, allow me to share just a couple of moments from this past year, you know, that I thought were, that made me really proud to have come from here. So when I was interviewing for jobs earlier this year and, you know, thinking about the next steps, um, I had an overwhelming amount of support, simply overwhelming from all of the faculty. And, uh, and so I was blown away. And uh, so faculty helped make calls. Uh, they helped set up cases for me so that employers could come watch me operate. And, uh, you know, and they helped me get ready for the next year when I'm going to practice independently. So, you know, and, uh, and those are huge, amazing things for me. And, uh, you know, just some examples. Dr. Liao rescheduled his own patients three times so that I could have a good case for when employers came and watched me operate. So, and, uh, and so he, set, he made me look good. He made sure I got the job on the spot every single time. So, and, uh, and Dr. Rosengart made numerous calls to, to several employers, you know, and he made sure that uh, I, I was able to secure the best position that fit me very well. You know, he's always pushed me to do better than I ever thought possible, honestly, over the last 10 years. I've gotten more out of this than I thought when I started. And uh, his unwavering support and mentorship is why I decided to stay further. Uh, that's one of the most important reasons. And then most importantly, I have to thank uh, Dr. Ganta, Dr. Moon, Caselli, Shafi, all of the faculty who help me every day in the operating room become more perfect with every step so that I can be independent on my own. And, uh, you know, and uh, this last year has honestly been the best year of training for me because of that, you know, 
And uh, so, thank you. Vivek said he was going to say one word. So uh, I'll say something. You know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Finally, yeah. So, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, uh, as I was walking uh, here uh, from St. Luke's Hospital, I was reminiscing the time that I had 10 years ago when I came here from Pakistan as an observer working across the street at Herman Memorial. Uh, coming from there, I think it was uh, this medical mecca, like sounds very fast, you know, looks very fascinating to me. And I was uh, uh, really looking forward to how I'm going to come to this country and make an, you know, uh, my place in my professional career. It took 10 years, and I think uh, now I can finally put something on my TikTok, a 10-year challenge that, you know, before and after. Uh, but I think it was not my, you know, uh, uh, accomplishment. It was, the accompl it was the accomplishment of the people who supported me through my journey, my mentors, uh, you know, friends, family. Um, I see Dr. Michelle Lor here. She was my mentor when I was an intern at the uh, University of Minnesota. Everyone helped me getting to this spot today, and I'm I'm thankful for all, to all of them, um, and uh, you know all the mentors here. They made a great impact, and who am I today? And I'm really excited for the next step. My friends, my family, they are not here unfortunately. They are out of country, but uh, they were the one who gave a lot of sacrifices. Uh, my wife gave up her career and just to support me in my dreams. Uh, my mom, she, who always wanted me to, you know, become a successful person, and she's not here to see me, but I think, you know, this is an accomplishment for all of the people who supported me. I was just uh, being part of the play. They were the real actors. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So you guys are, if you don't want to say anything, we're no. giving an award. Here's how, yeah, that, that, that's are why we're standing are we here. Supposed yeah. to stay up here? <laughs> we have no intention of dragging this out. <laughs> we're going to do it again. Okay, I'm going to introduce the, uh, our recipient for the Thoracic Surgery Faculty Teaching Award. So uh, while we're fortunate to have many great teachers and mentors, the Chief Cardiothoracic Surgery Residents wanted to recognize one individual that stands out. Uh, this highly skilled surgeon is a tireless worker a staunch resident advocate, and a very approachable person. Uh, whether it's a thoracoabdominal aneurysm, a mitral valve, or a cabbage, you can bet this person is always scrubbed in day or night, ready to give a hand. And uh, his attitude and surgical skills are something we can all aspire to obtain. We've all really enjoyed working with him this past year. And um, although he humbly calls himself the great facilitator, you know we like to call him a great mentor and a great friend. So, uh, so this year we present the award to Dr. Vicente Orozco. This is a, a truly honor, and uh, you know this award is for you guys because you guys put the, the whole work and uh, make my life easy. So it's easy for me to let you do the cases and walk you through. So I think you are the really champions of, of the residency, and, uh, and and it's a pleasure, and obviously it's an honor to for me to to have this award. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Very proud of uh, the four graduates in cardiothoracic surgery. You guys are all amazing, and I. Um, I'm very proud of everything you've done and uh, would gladly refer my family and friends to all four of you for, for care. Uh, I've been asked to present the Thoracic Surgery Scholar Award. All four of our graduates are scholars, uh, but uh, one we select one resident based on their performance, highest performance on the in-service exam and their cumulative experience in terms of re uh, research publications and mock oral exam performance uh, over their three-year uh, fellowship program. Uh, this year's award winner is uh, Dr. Vivek Patel. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Joe Mills, the Reed Professor of Surgery and Chief of the Division of Vascular Surgery and Endovascular Therapy at Baylor College of Medicine. And I'm also the Program Director for our Integrated Vascular Surgery Residency Program. It is my great honor to introduce our first graduate of that program, which was initiated in 2016 
and he is Ahmed Kokir. Ahmed is a recipient of King Abdullah Scholarship for Higher Education from Saudi Arabia. His father, in fact, is a cardiac surgeon who trained at Baylor College of Medicine, so it must be in his genes. Ahmed started out in general surgery and became our first trainee in our five-year integrated program in 2016, which includes a year of research. He's performed in exemplary fashion. He's, amic he's amiable, he gets along with people. He's developed an excellent clinical skill set. He's the proud husband and father of two children and he's a devoted father. He's done excellent work and in continuing his work, he's fallen in love with the aorta and he's gonna extend his time at Baylor and do a fellowship with Dr. Joe Caselli in the hopes of ultimately returning back to Saudi Arabia to practice, practice the full spectrum of aortic and peripheral arterial disease. Congratulations, Ahmed, on a great job and being the first, and you'll always be the first graduate of our vascular surgery integrated residency training program. Congratulations. Dr. Mills, you wanna take a picture? Thank you, everyone. Um, you know, certainly had something prepared, but uh, looking at you guys and, and, and what, what we've been through together uh, keeps me uh, lost of words. But um, I'd like to thank everyone. I'd like to uh, th thank and congratulate my wife first. Uh, she, throughout this process, uh, had a, um, uh, got through a master's degree, took care of uh, two children, and raised them and uh, took care of me when I went back home after a tough day. So thank you and congratulations. And thank you to my parents who taught me uh, good manners are uh, what's important at the end of the day. Thank you to my uh, teachers, uh, Dr. Mills, Dr. Galani, Dr. Barshas, Dr. Choi, Dr. Chung, uh, Dr. Pallister, uh, Hans Raj and Greenleaf. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to my uh, co-fellows, uh, Alex Garza and Mark Iltis uh, for always standing by my side, uh, Jorjito Miranda as well, and the rest of the uh, surgical department. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Nice thing, he, he'll be back here in three years. So if you want to come back and see. <laughs> Uh, Hi, next. I'm Dr. Neil Barchez. I want to congratulate Dr. Alejandro Alex Garza on graduating from our vascular surgery and endovascular therapy fellowship training program. Alex completed his general surgery training at the University of Texas in the Rio Grande Valley. He will be practicing the art and science of vascular surgery back in the valley at the Doctors Hospital Renaissance or DHR Health in Edinburgh, Texas. Uh, this is part of the largest, uh, one of the largest uh, physician-owned healthcare systems in the country. Alex has been a pleasure to work with for two years. He has an impeccable work ethic. He has a well-thought-out management plan for his patients. Alex gets the job done. Alex, I don't think I'll ever be able to work alongside another fellow, closing a leg at the end of a long case, interrupted Vicryl, of course without hearing the falsetto sounds of your, your voice singing along, belting out the hits of ACDC, Def Leppard, The Scorpions. Great way to end a, end, end a long case. Thank you again for all your hard work and congratulations. All right, hi everybody. Uh, like Ahmed, I, I thought we didn't have to give a speech, so I didn't have anything ready. Uh, but obviously, I mean, needless to say, I want to thank, first of all, my family. Muchas gracias, mamá. Mi amor, te amo. Gracias por todo. I want to thank my kids. Uh, they are the base and the foundation. Everything, everything I do and everything we do together, this is only another step in our, in our, uh, uh, in our beautiful family life and uh, I want to thank all of my attendings. Uh, I'm mean, already named this, and there's no need for me to do. Uh, and thank you in general, everybody. I mean, it was it was a it was a great pleasure working. I I, I met most of the chief residents, and I just want to say last year when they were four years rotating at the VA, and it was a great pleasure. And and I tell this to my residents down in the valley, it's like these guys do work hard. They know what they're doing. So you uh, you have to step it up. Um, congratulations to the chief residents, and and uh, the best is yet to come.
congratulate Dr. Mark Iltis on graduating from our vascular surgery and endovascular therapy fellowship training program. Mark's dream had been to train at Baylor. Uh, it was at the University of Tennessee where he did his general surgery uh, training that he worked with several Baylor alumni that uh, initiated that dream. Uh, Dr. Catherine Seeger, Dr. Reshma Brombat, and the son of a former Baylor faculty member, uh, Dr. Ed Garrett Jr. Uh, Dr. Garrett's father, Dr. Ed Garrett Sr., had been a contemporary of Dr. DeBakey and an uh, early member of this department. Uh, Mark's practice in the art and, vascular, uh, art and science of vascular surgery will be with Fayette Surgical Associates in Lexington, Kentucky. Mark's been a pleasure to work with for two years. Uh, Mark's uh, quick smile and easygoing demeanor really put many of our patients and our surgical team routinely at ease. I don't think I'll ever be routinely addressed with, hey man, without thinking of you, Mark, or someone from the old neighborhood. Congratulations, and thank you again. Both you and Alex will both be uh, role models for your children. Thank you. Thank you so much for the kind words, Dr. Barsis. Um, like my uh, colleagues here, I didn't know we were going to give a speech, but um, I can't give enough thanks to my wife, uh, Nicole Kuypers, um, one of the strongest women I know, uh, next to my mom and uh, my father. My brother Mike's here, uh, and my daughter Maya, and my son Gavin. Um, particularly, we've traveled through four different states to get here uh, through training. It's been long, tough, long hours, as you all know. Everybody knows that here. <laughs> Um, it's kind of finally come to fruition, and it's just, um, you know, been, been an amazing uh, experience here at Baylor. Um, as Dr. Barsh mentioned, I, I became very infatuated with vascular surgery at my uh, residency program in Memphis, uh, learning of Ed Garrett and um, Senior and uh, Ed Garrett's Junior has uh, inspired me to become a vascular surgeon. And uh, these wonderful gentlemen here uh, took that torch and passed it along. Um, Dr. Galani, <laughs> Dr. Mills, Dr. Pallister. Dr. Barsis, Dr. Orozco, Dr. Caselli, and uh, her, um, everybody else mentioned by Dr. Um, Cook here earlier have all really uh, passed the torch along. And um, I'm going to be able to help people and um, do my best to give Baylor the, that legacy that it deserves. Thank you all very much. Well, um, it's time for the Vasco Surgery Chief Award and uh, uh, outstand, outstanding uh, faculty member. Uh, this was uh, a very close and, and tight one. Uh, as a lot of you may know, our faculty are all great. Uh, we all learned uh, a lot from them, if not everything in Vasco Surgery. Uh, and then, no further ado, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, award goes to uh, Dr. Mills. Yeah, I don't deserve this. We have a great team, and, and every faculty member works really hard, and, and I think we work together. And the only credit I can take is trying to build a team of people that share the hard times and share the fun times and work together. So thanks a lot, guys. So our next group is a pediatric surgery. We have one fellow in pediatric surgery a year. Uh, Dr. Maziotti just walked in, so we know he's here. So thank you for stopping operating. Uh, Hello, Mark Manziotti here. I'm the uh, program director for the Pete Surgery Fellowship, and it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce Dr. Ekina Anwuka as our graduating pediatric surgery fellow. Uh, there are so many superlatives to describe Ekina. Uh, let me get to a few of them. Uh, first of all, he's just a great leader. He runs the busiest service in the hospital with ease, uh, with no drama, efficiently and effectively. The residents and students love him and, and uh, respect him and admire him. Secondly, he gets along with every other service in the hospital. He is a great ambassador for our service, and I've never once had a complaint about Ekina. In fact, I've received 
constant praise about him and his interactions with others. He also has amassed a set of technical skills which are very impressive over his two years of fellowship. I've done some very complex cases with him and he operates with autonomy, skill, precision, confidence, and he needs very little direction. And he is certainly ready to go out and operate on his own. He was very competitive in the job market and um, had a lot of offers. And we are very lucky that he decided to stay with us. And so uh, we are ecstatic about that. Congratulations to Ekina and his family, his wife, Amanda, his kids, Amara and Joshua. And uh, we'd like to thank them for lending us their husband and dad for two years. And um, we're just very proud of him. And congratulations again, great job. Thanks, Dr. Mazzetti, for the kind words. I um, just want to say that I um, I loved the video. The fireplace in the back was a really nice touch. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were really speaking to me. <laughs> no, but the, um, the opportunity to train here has just it was a dream come true. Um, I think the journey to Pete's surgery is just one that is just filled with doubt, and so to be able to train at this institution was just such a wonderful thing. I still remember the day we got the letter, my wife and I, where we were, what we were doing. And so it has just not disappointed. They say it's like drinking from a fire hose, and this is true. Um, it is a very grueling fellowship, but the thing that has made it worth it is, of course, the people. Um, being able to work with the staff, Dr. Maziati, Dr. Rylan, Dr. Vasudevan, Dr. Nocturne, um, and of course, the countless others, I have just received just um, an incredible amount of mentorship um, and just lessons on how to become a leader, how to become a surgeon. And I just look for ways to emulate you guys uh, constantly. And so I'm very happy and fortunate that I get to stay. Um, really you guys, and of course the residents too, getting to know you guys and work with you guys are the reason that really um, I'm glad that I have the opportunity to stay. So it's, it's definitely um, a privilege. And I can't leave because I realize that I've become a combination of all of my attendings' quirks. And so if I ever leave, I'll just be that weird guy that meows like a cat, <laughs> says things like, show enough dead, <laughs> and does high pitch noise like Dr. Nocturne. <laughs> so, um, so thank you very much. And you know, I, I, of course, just can't step off the stage without thanking my family. Um, 10 years, of course, is a long time uh, for a journey. And I think more than you know, even the energy and stress that I've put in, my family, of course, has endured it too. When I said I was graduating today, my son was like, oh, are you done with work? And he was very excited. I was like, not completely done with work, but you know, <laughs> with fellowship. So thank you, mom, Dr. Janine Richardson, for being here. She's never missed a graduation of mine. My kids, Joshua and Amara, and of course, special thank you to my wife, Amanda, who is just the, the, um, just the foundation of our family, who just holds everything together um, when I'm not there, um, when I'm working, doing whatever, and of course is holding down her own full-time job, even to the point of pulling all-nighters to get her own work done because she's taking care of the kids during the daytime during COVID. So I just can't say enough kind things about you. So thank you all very much. So I'm dressed like this, I'm on call at the hospital, and I got, of course, delayed and bumped by two or three hours. Just get in front of the picture. Yeah, yeah, okay. So next we have five surgical critical care fellows uh, run by Dr. Jeremy Ward. Hello. My name is Jeremy Ward, and I have the privilege of serving as program director for the Surgical Critical Care Fellowship. Please join me in offering a heartfelt congratulations to our graduating fellows, Elizabeth Allure, Catherine Ivy Vacker, Catherine Joy, Jonathan Vo, and Abigail Zamora. 
For the past year, they have tirelessly served in our ICUs, caring for our most critically ill and injured patients with compassion and dedication while honing their craft and participating in the education of our medical students and residents. As you continue on in your journeys, we cannot wait to hear about your future successes. We wish you the best of luck. Again, congratulations. Come on up. If you want to say anything, podium. Good, 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 done. We're good. Good, good, very good. It's been a pleasure. We'll chop the pot and move on. So next we have our uh, chief residence in general surgery. General surgery is uh, uh, typically the beginning of your surgical career. Um, and it is one of the bigger chunks of time in your life that you're going to spend to become a, a trainee and to become a surgeon. So the program director uh, for general surgery is Ron Cotton, and he is going to do the introductions of the introductions. Thank you, Dr. Scott, and good evening, everyone. My name, again, is Ronald Cotton. I'm a transplant surgeon here at Baylor, and I'm the program director for the General Surgery Residency. The General Surgery Residency is the mother program. It was, it was first accredited here at Baylor College of Medicine in December of 1953, and it's truly a transformative experience. This class of chief residents are extraordinary in every way, and they join a fraternity of extraordinary surgeons who have changed this world. It has been a joy and a privilege to serve as program director for you all, and I, I am exceptionally proud of both your accomplishments and where you'll go. All of our general surgery chief residents have chosen to be introduced by members of our faculty, so I'll invite the graduating chief resident along with their faculty introducer uh, to describe them all today. So we will first have Dr. Catherine Baugh, who will be introduced by Dr. Eugene Choi. First of all, I just want to say that it's a rather interesting hybrid model to, uh, this year with uh, videos and in person. Um, uh, I'm Gene Choi, I'm a surgical oncologist at the uh, Houston VA Medical Center as well as the St. Luke's uh, Bay Baylor Medical Center as well. It's my pleasure to introduce graduating General uh, Surgery Chief Resident Catherine Ball. Uh, Dr. Ball, and interestingly, you can see her hometowns were Anchorage, Jakarta, London, Melbourne, and Houston, which I really didn't know. But knowing her, she's actually quite a worldly person. Uh, she graduated from the American University with a Bachelor's of Art in Biochemistry, a minor in Mathematics, easy classes, and from the Eastern Virginia Medical School where she was elected to the AOA Medical um, Honor Society. Catherine has really distinguished herself in the program both clinically and academically. Uh, for example, she has scored in the top 95 percentile on the APSITE exam. Uh, each year she's been here except one. And that was 75%, which is still good. Uh, she worked with Bill, and I suspect that she probably took a vacation that year, which is why it was lower. <laughs> Catherine distinguished herself here. In, uh, um, um, she worked with Bill Fisher during her research years investigating uh, novel methods for the isolation and detection of circulating tumor cells in pancreatic cancer patients. She's authored nine publications and with an equal number of oral presentations at national meetings. She's received numerous awards from this department, including the Best Intern of the Year, uh, the McCollum Achievement Award, given, which is given to the, uh, the student, with, the resident with the highest APSITE score. She's not done it once, she's done it twice of seven years, so that's a high percentage. Her clinical skills are equally impressive. She brings a wealth of knowledge uh, and talent to the bedside and to the operating room. She's at, she asks the right questions, and she, does, she makes the best decisions. And she's also a consummate leader, always a team building. Catherine will be leaving us to do an a endocrine uh, surgery fellowship at the University of Pittsburgh. There's Dr. Grogan here. I know she would make a great colleague, just a plug. Um, there she will have to learn how to say yints instead of y'all, but I think she can manage that one. I and the rest of the general surgery and surgical oncology staff wish Catherine well in her future endeavors and congratulate her. And I'm truly proud to call her a colleague and friend. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Troy. Uh, I did wanna share something with all of you that some of you may know. 
Uh, my dad was actually diagnosed with lung cancer when I was a teenager, and he got all of his, uh, all of his care through St. Luke's. Uh, his oncologist, Dr. Berniker, was just out of this world fantastic. I mean, just incredibly smart, kind, patient, and Baylor trained. And uh, even though we lost my dad, uh, we still think the world of his oncologist to, to this day. And so when it came time to pick a residency, I thought, if that's what it means to be Baylor trained, then that is exactly what I wanted to be. And so uh, just thank you to all my attendings, to all the staff, to all my co-residents, especially the, my co-chiefs. Uh, just truly thank you for helping shape me into the, the person and the surgeon that I am today. Thank you. out of this world, fantastic. I mean, just incredibly smart, kind, patient, and Baylor trained. And uh, even though we lost my dad, uh, we still think the world of his oncologist to, to this day. And so when it came time to pick a residency, I thought, if that's what it means to be Baylor trained, then that is exactly what I wanted to be. And so uh, just thank you to all my attendings, to all the staff, to all my co-residents, especially the, my co-chiefs. Uh, just truly thank you for helping shape me into the, the person and the surgeon that I am today. Thank you. Our next resident is Dr. Kevin Wang. Dr. Wang will be introduced by Dr. Tao Galvan. Kevin Huang grew up in Iowa City, went to Carver College of Medicine at the University of Iowa. After graduation, he will stay here at Baylor with us and learn to become an abdominal transplant surgeon. <clears throat> What you see up here is what Kevin wrote for himself when he was asked for a brief uh, accomplishments in 150 words or less. I think it's lovely, and I think it's impressive. But I would like to posit a counter argument. Kevin, your accomplishments are actually much greater, much wider, and much longer lasting. Residency is marked by the camaraderie you've cr created when going through trials and tribulations. These hardships you have endured together have ultimately made one another better. Kevin's greatest success, what I believe makes him remarkable, is how highly esteemed he is amongst his peers. These are their collective words. From going over the pathophysiology of a disease, walking through management options, taking a junior through a case, it is evident how much he loves to teach. In the OR, he is patient and gives tangible, constructive feedback. He is well-loved and a role model. He is bright and fills every room with warmth and laughter. Kevin is definitely one of my favorite people. He will often pop into ORs to see what his co-residents are up to. This is usually to heckle, but he often provides a lot of comfort during those bad gallbladders. Kevin's lemon bars are insane. He left them in the fourth year room at Ben Taub when I was on call, and I ate like half of them. As a leader, Kevin has always been fair and knows how to allocate responsibilities well. He takes the time to tell us the mistakes he made as a junior, he does this after we've presented M&Ms, after we've struggled with difficult cases. This really helps all the juniors get over their mistakes because if someone as amazing as Kevin has similar complications, then they too can push through those mistakes. Kevin is without a doubt one of the best chiefs I've ever worked with. He is a great surgeon and excellent clinician, but what makes him an amazing chief is his ability to protect his team, look out for his juniors, teach, and deeply invest in improving team morale. He used to bake lemon squares and leave them in the fourth year call room. I'm pretty sure he did that because he knew we were having a hard time adjusting to the responsibilities. He has great intuition on when one of his teammates is having a hard time and finds the best way to help. Kevin is a resident's resident and will be a surgeon's surgeon. He's the ultimate team player and genuinely cares. He produces collegial and effective teams. As excellent as he is, humility is probably his defining trait. He facilitates a culture of collegiality, kinship, humanism, and respect. He has fought very hard to create a better environment for residents, and we are all indebted to him. These were words directly from multiple other extraordinary Michael E. DeBakey surgery residents, of which we are filled with. It, this only proves, Kevin, that the success that you have achieved is so grand. After reading so many of these, I honestly doubt that you have any enemies except for bladed trocars. <laughs> Kevin is an engaging leader who leans in, has skin in the game, and looks out for all those around him. 
He cooks, he cares, he creates a strong family for all of us, but especially, and most importantly, amongst the residents. This culture, this leadership, this love for your team, that's your legacy, Kevin. And I congratulate you on all that you have accomplished. Congratulations. Oh my, that was incredible. Thank you for the super kind words, Dr. Galvan. I wrote it. <laughs> First off, I want to thank my family for being here, my mom and dad, my sister, and thank you, Rita, my fiance. I can't wait to marry you in March. Uh, I want to thank all my co-chiefs, co co-residents. You guys are my extended family, and all the PAs and NPs. Can't imagine how much Sarah Land helped me survive my first couple months in residency. You guys are amazing. Um, I really want to thank Dr. Goss. He has been an incredible mentor. Last year, he sat me down in his office and offered me this position to continue to train with him and Donald Transplant in. This has been the greatest blessing in my life. This is, I can't wait to work with you guys, my family, my new family, Dr. Cotton, Dr. Rana, Dr. Agavon, and O'Mahony, one of the smartest doctors in this whole hospital. You guys are amazing, and I can't wait to be with you. Thank you so much, guys. All right, we next have Dr. Emily Steen. Dr. Steen will be introduced by Dr. George Van Buren. Tal is always a very tough act to follow if anybody remembers her graduation speech. So I have the distinct honor uh, of presenting uh, Dr. Emily Steen. So Emily is born and raised in Fort Worth, Texas, the daughter of uh, two very, very bright internists. She proceeded on to UVA, where she was an, actually an archaeology major and graduated Phi Beta Kappa. She proceeded on to uh, UT Southwestern back home for medical school where she was excellent and actually came to interview here at Baylor College of Medicine. She was one of my interviewees. We were lucky enough to have her stay on for her general surgery residency here at Baylor College of Medicine where she has been nothing less than spectacular. She's absolutely crushed it. Uh, during her time in the lab, she worked in the Texas Children's Texas uh, Regen Tissue Regeneration Lab. She had over 25 publications during that time period and numerous awards. As she matured into a chief resident, she was selected by both her faculty and colleagues as one of the administrative chiefs and has become an incredibly mature and uh, well-spoken uh, leader in the department. The, she's moving on to an endocrine surgery fellowship next year back at UT Southwestern uh, up in Dallas. Um, however, we always hope to have her come on back here uh, to Houston. You know, I, spending time with Emily, you enjoy her because she's smart, she's witty, but the most important thing about Emily that I've learned over the years is that she's insightful. She's insightful for the situation around herself. She's insightful for the people that she's spending time with. She, that means it's whether it's her faculty, her patients, and most importantly, I think Emily has become insightful for herself. She's learned to be introspective, and as a surgeon, that's one of the most important qualities uh, in the world. It's been an incredible pleasure to train Emily Steen, and I'm looking forward to having her as a colleague over the years and incredibly proud of her. Just want to say thank you to everyone, my co-residents, my co-chiefs, um, all the faculty, um, my husband. I wouldn't be here without you. Lizzie, my sister, for always telling me this job is uh, cool and interesting, even when I didn't feel that, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and reminding me of that. And uh, thank you to my parents. Um, I, the only good I do in this world is because your voice is speaking through me. So thank you, everyone. Our next graduate is Dr. Mariatu Verla, who will be introduced by Dr. Chad Wilson. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce you this evening, Dr. Mariatu Verla. Uh, she's originally from Sierra Leone. Uh, she came to us by way of the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. And uh, I think she's been here for seven years. She's our, one of our research track residents who did research with Dr. Olatoye. And upon graduation, uh, she is planning to relocate to the weird and wonderful state of Florida, uh, where I think she will be in private practice in Orlando. She will be uh, accompanied by her amazing husband, uh, Terrence. Congratulations, Terrence, also. Uh, and her precious son, who I just met today, Adriel. Um, so allow me the, pr the privilege of the podium uh, to say a few personal thoughts. Um, 
The other day, we had our chief resident breakfast, and Mariatu expressed her desire to be remembered by other residents for a trait of being calm. And I think that's a very accurate uh, trait. I think she is calm. But I want to I want to add a few other words that I think um, uh, represent you very well. So the first one I would say is poised. The next one I would say is classy. Uh, and then the last one I would say is grace. And those characteristics, that's right. <laughs> those characteristics uh, are what make you really outstanding and special. Uh, yes, you are technically amazing surgeon. Yes, you're a great doctor. But when it comes down to it, it's because of those human characteristics that cannot be duplicated, that you are spectacularly special. Um, as a faculty, the residents often start to feel like family. Uh, you you kind of have familiar relationships with them. Usually, when I was younger, it's like, these are my little brothers and little sisters. As I start to get older, they start to feel more like nieces and nephews and maybe even children. But with Mariatu, the relationship has always felt like, like, like that's my older, <laughs> older. And that's not shade. That's, uh, that's because of her maturity and, and that poise. It's always made me feel like I'm explaining myself. So you are special. You are spectacular. So please, everyone, please help me to express uh, gratitude for your years of service. Uh, give congratulations for this outstanding achievement and uh, wish you the very best of fortunes in your future uh, endeavors. Congratulations. Dr. Wilson, thank you for such kind and wonderful words. Um, and because of you, I will always be prepared in the OR. <laughs> um, but um, today still really feels surreal for me. Um, but I really just thank God for bringing me to this point because it's only because of him that I'm here today. Um, thank you to Dr. Scott and Dr. Uh, Rosengart for giving me the opportunity to train here. I'll forever be grateful. Um, specifically to Dr. Uh, Bearcat, to Dr. Cotton, Dr. Holder Haynes, uh, Dr. Rojas, and also to Dr. Wilson. Um, thank you for always uh, have, uh, having an open door and always encouraging me and uh, just always keeping it very real. Um, I'd also like to thank my co-residents and my uh, co-chiefs as well, too, for making our experience very memorable. Um, to my family, thank you for your love and your prayers. Um, thank you for always reminding me of who I am and where I come from. Um, to Samantha and Shadrach, thank you for always being there for us. Um, last but not least, to my husband, Terrence, congratulations. Um, you completed your new surgery training as well, too, today, so congratulations on that. Um, we've been on this journey for 13 years, and we're still going, so I look forward to seeing what the future holds for us. And to my son, Adriel, I love you very much. Thank you. Our next graduate is Dr. Megan Vu. Dr. Vu will be introduced by Dr. Judd Nukter. Well, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Megan, for the honor of uh, presenting you. Um, uh, actually, I should say Commander Vu. Uh, uh, Megan is a uh, lieutenant commander in the Navy, as you know. Um, the thing that strikes me most about Megan, uh, having worked with her over the years, is um, her incredible uh, dedication to service. Um, she really wants to um, help people in their most difficult times, their most difficult moments. Uh, that's something that she's really drawn to. Um, I th she um, credits this uh, in part to her family, her family are all in healthcare, and uh, her grandmother is a nurse who uh, uh, left Vietnam in 1975 and created a new career here in America. Uh, and I think that that's one of uh, her inspirations as far as uh, being in service and also uh, one of the things that led Megan uh, to enlist in the Navy when she was in medical school. Um, aside from uh, that patriotism, it's also being drawn to the service she could provide in military medicine. Um, Megan is the second global surgery resident at Baylor, uh, but she's actually the first one who is completing uh, the uh, sequence that was developed uh, by the 
true first resident, uh, Rachel Davis, who created the residency along with Dr. Rosengart. Uh, so Megan um, really collaborated with Rachel to develop what is currently our global surgery uh, residency track. Uh, part of that was she identified an opportunity to uh, do pediatric surgery in Vietnam. And uh, she not only rotated with uh, pediatric surgeons in Vietnam, but she's actually now leading a multi-center clinical study of pediatric surgery in Vietnam. Um, it's really no surprise that Megan is an excellent surgeon. She is unbelievably action-oriented. Um, she's compulsively detail-oriented. Um, she's selfless in her dedication uh, to her patients. Uh, next year, she will be uh, completing uh, MPH uh, as part of her final global surgery year. Uh, she'll be completing a, uh, an MPH at UNC. Uh, but she's actually going to be spending the majority of the year uh, in Vietnam doing uh, clinical pediatric surgery, as well as continuing her clinical research. Uh, it's just been a constant honor to uh, have uh, known Megan, to have traveled with her, and to have uh, been influenced by her. And I know that she will continue to contribute both in global surgery and in pediatric surgery in the future. Thank you, Dr. Nocturne. Um, I want to really thank my mom uh, for being here. and. Also, always talking at the dinner table about her patients uh, and making me want to take care of patients. Um, thank my aunt, Yi Young, who's my godmother, who's here today. Um, took care of me since I was a little baby. And uh, did. she's a pediatrician. She did all my annual well checks. And I still remember every year she asked me what I wanted to be. <laughs> and uh, this is what I want to be. Um, thank you to uh, Alex, Benjamin, Lisandro for being wonderful kids. And um, Liz, uh, you know, only you know everything that we've been through. Um, and thank you for your support. Thanks. Our next graduate is Dr. Matt Yanoff, who will be introduced by Dr. Michelle Lohr. Hi, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, I'd like to say, you know, I've worked at two places before coming here. Um, and both of those places, I worked four years and four years, so I never really got to see an internship, you know, an intern class graduate. So this is a very special year to see you guys go from intern to graduating chief residence. And um, how cool it is um, to see Dr. Nabil Gould graduate, who I trained as an intern at University of Minnesota. And so I'm really proud of him, and I'm proud of all the chiefs. Um, for all of their accomplishments. Um, so, uh, Matt, um, thank you for asking me to present you. Um, there are a couple of things that deserve mention when it comes to Dr. Yanoff. Um, the first thing is that he came to me when he was maybe a second year, and he said, um, you know, I, I think I want to do what you do. I want to be a hernia surgeon. I want to work in the ICU. And I knew from then on that things were a little bit off with him because... Um, <laughs> Most of the residents actually asked me the opposite. How can I possibly never, ever take care of one of these patients in my entire practice? So um, I'll start with that. Um, the other thing is that um, a couple things to know about Dr. Yanoff. One is that he's a bit of a hypochondriac. Um, in the course of his five years of residency, he's thought he's had almost every disease that's been described in any surgical textbook. Um, except um, for the one which he really did have, which was a nearly career-ending incident with a compression sock. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, even last week he came to me and he said, you know, I'm pretty sure I have an esophageal perforation. Um, and I was like, that's interesting because you're here in the operating room and you seem to be fine and I think we're okay. Um, and indeed, a few days later, he sent me a text to say, yes, you're right, I didn't have an esophageal perforation, followed by a second text that said, it might have been an aortic dissection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing to really know about Dr. Yanoff is he does really great impressions. I haven't seen him do one of me yet, but if you ever catch him, please record it because I'd love to see it. Um, there's a phrase that he taught me that has really become a mantra of my operating room, which is, uh, goes something like this, which is, he's going to love it, or she's going to love it. And I came to find out later that it's actually part of the impression of Dr. Winnicor. <laughs> um, <laughs> But the context of it really is uh, when something is actually a little bit cosmetically off or things don't lay you know, perfectly, that's when you really use it. Um, and I will say that it has a lot of meaning, actually, because you try your best in the operating room, and sometimes things are a little bit off, but you really just want to give it your best shot. And so I um, was really, uh, you know, we really kind of taken it to heart, that saying, and so it'll always be part of my operating room. It'll be his legacy on me, I should say. Um, so um, Dr. Yanoff is going to Virginia Commonwealth uh, University to do a critical care fellowship. I know he's ready to graduate from residency because for the last several months he's been practicing being and attending, he says, when he comes to the operating room, he says he's practicing. And he'll throw around phrases like, um, you shouldn't have to ask me that, it's on my preference card. <laughs> or, um, someone get the rep in here right away. Um, and then, you know, over the past few times I've worked with him, it's really gotten impossible to tell the difference between when he's practicing and when it's real. Um, he was taking a third-year resident through an inguinal hernia repair the other day, and she threw a stitch that wasn't perfect, and he looked up at her and he said, um, now, did you really want it to look like that? Really? <laughs> um, so, Matt, um, it was great getting to know your wife, Beth, and I love hearing the stories about all of your residency progeny, Clement and Bernadette, um, who I got to meet tonight. Um, Thank you for being such an awesome, amazing resident to train. I truly look forward to hearing about what you become in the future. If I could offer just a little bit of advice um, for someone going into critical care, it's you know reflect on the things that you could have done better, but really take the time to reflect on the things that you did really well. Um, it's really hard being an intensive care doctor sometimes, and um, you really have to focus on your wins and your saves. Um, with that, um, again, congratulations, Dr. Yanoff, and to all of the chief residents graduating. Um, and it's really been a pleasure and an honor to work with all of you. Thank you, Dr. Lohr, for that great introduction. Uh, I'd just really like to thank all my family and friends and co-residents uh, who got me through the past five years especially my wife, who has brought up uh, my two beautiful children who are behaving excellently in the back. So we'll need to come up with some reward to give them uh, on the way home uh, from graduation. But, uh, you know, my wife has been there for me uh, ever, on this journey ever since uh, I came back home uh, as a third year med student, right before we had to start applying to residency, and said, I'm not doing medicine anymore, I'm doing surgery. So that kind of uh, took our life down another path. So I love you, Beth. Thank you so much. Thank you to my family uh, for being here, and thank you, everyone. One minute, 57. I timed it. I cut it down, too. So uh, what a sincere honor and pleasure it is to introduce Dr. Nader Zamani. Dr. Zamani is joined this evening by his mother, Farida, his father Ahmad, and his sister Roya. We were very fortunate to recruit Nader from our own Baylor College of Medicine and are happy that he will be staying here for at least the next two years. But did you know that surgery was not always Dr. Zamani's aspiration? In fact, Nader, your mom told me that you didn't even want to be a doctor because you didn't like blood. Did you also know that although he attended the Michael E. DeBakey High School for Health Professions, Dr. DeBakey was not his role model? Nope, not at all. That title belonged to a Michael Scott. Yep, that Michael Scott of Dunder Mifflin fame. Yep, according to your younger sister, Nader always wanted to be that office boss and spent hours of his youth playing office, and his role, of course, was the boss, while his sister was the employee. 
Well, Nada, Roya wanted me to remind you that she actually became an attending before you, um, but does admit that you are the perfect role model to her, and she thinks you're the most amazing person in the world. I think a lot of us here tonight would also agree with that statement. As I think about Nada as a physician, I'm, a, I'm reminded of one of my favorite quotes by a famous surgeon who stated, the fundamental act of medical care is assumption of responsibility, complete responsibility for the welfare of the patient. No statement exemplifies more the type of care Nada provides his patients. I have witnessed firsthand Nader's maturity, his dedication to his patients, and his conviction to the profession that has allowed him to become one of the most respected residents we have ever trained. Nader has excellent clinical judgment, surgical skill, and patient care, and above all, he has the highest level of emotional intelligence, humility, and professionalism. When Nader is not busy being a superstar resident, he enjoys being with his family, biking, and like all of us, binge watching The Office. Nader, we are extremely proud of you, and I personally want to say how much your friendship means to me. You have made me a better person, a better brother, and a better physician. I would also like to thank your parents and sister for welcoming me into your family and their never-ending generosity and hospitality. I can't wait to see what great things the future holds for you and look forward to sharing those moments with you for years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Stilfein, I can never thank you enough for everything that you've done for me. So thank you. I really do need some notes. Um, so to my family, my mom, dad, and my sister, this day is not ours, it's yours. I hope you know how thankful I am. Uh, to the faculty and staff who have trained us, um, there's no way that I can individually express how appreciative we are, but I'm gonna try. Um, in particular, Dr. Rosengart, Dr. Scott, Dr. Silverfine, um, Dr. Choi, Dr. Troutner, Sydney, Holly, Jay, Sabrina, Dr. Mills, Dr. Barshes, Dr. Kuyis, I'm incredibly grateful for everything. Um, there's absolutely no way, again, that I can appreciate or express how appreciative I truly am. But what I can say that is, is that as residents, we will always carry your teachings with us. And that will be for the rest of our lives. And I cannot think of a better legacy to have. So thank you very much. And to all the graduates of all the programs, congratulations. So we're into the award portion of the ceremony. Uh, we are going to uh, have Dr. Carrie Sue come up and give four student awards. Again, uh, congratulations to all the graduates tonight. Um, I have the pleasure of presenting the UME awards. So our um, first award recognizes the outstanding student in surgery, and this goes to Summer Liu. Uh, Summer couldn't be here this evening. She's actually started her residency. So. Let's have a round of applause for Summer. And then moving right along, a, um, the outstanding student in plastic surgery goes to Sarth Raj, who uh, also has started residency, in, <laughs> and he can't be here either. So. And then the, uh, the next award is, let's see. The next award is the uh, Medical Student Award for Best Teaching Resident. And so this is an award that's uh, selected by the medical students. And for this year, the recipient is Dr. Vamsi Arabindi. I saw Vamsi earlier. Congratulations, Vamsi. Well deserved. And then uh, the final award I have to present is the Medical Student Award for the Best Teaching Faculty. And the recipient this year is Dr. Mark Maziotti. So next we have a group of awards for general surgery, for the general surgery residents. And Dr. Cotton is going to give those awards. Thank you, Dr. Scott, and I have three awards to present to our general surgery residents. Uh, the first award is the McCullum Academic Achievement Award, named for Dr. Charlie McCullum, who's joined us today. 
who is a surgical leader who was the longstanding program director for this surgery program and whose shoes I one day hope to even partially fill. This is given to the resident who achieves the highest, um, highest score on our in-training exam, the ABSIDE exam, and this year's recipient is Dr. Christopher Ryan. And our next award is chosen by members of the entire residency, and this goes to the outstanding intern, the person who in their first year of residency has truly distinguished themselves for extraordinary achievement in multiple ways. And this year's recipient is Dr. Centura and Barasu. And last but definitely not least is the Outstanding Chief Award, which is chosen by the entire residency in recognition of a chief resident who goes above and beyond and distinguishes themselves from a truly outstanding class. This year's recipient is Dr. Nader Zamani. So next we'll have Dr. Awad uh, to give the Outstanding Resident Award of the VA. So good evening, everyone. Congratulations to all the graduating chiefs. Uh, every year, the Baylor College of Medicine Department of Surgery faculty at the VA uh, goes through all of our rotating chiefs to select the most outstanding chief resident based on their uh, service, their care, and and outstanding surgical skill to all the surgeries they do for the veterans. Um, and as you heard from all our faculty presenters this evening, it was incredibly difficult this year to choose one from amongst these superstars, all of which had uh, done a tremendous, tremendous effort in caring for the patients and in uh, teaching us as much as we teach them. Uh, but this year's award goes to Dr. Nader Zamani. So next, the general surgeons are going to present award to the faculty. So we need our general surgery residents to return to the podium. Nader, I know you've done a couple laps, but <laughs> come on back. Our, uh, I think uh, we have an award for our, the, the faculty that we felt um, really helped us and taught us a lot and that uh, really uh, deserve recognition. And that's uh, Dr. Ozaki and Dr. Barakat. Dr. Barakat is not here, but Dr. Ozaki is basically Dr. Barakat anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say this is quite an honor and obviously unexpected. <laughs> um, and I know Dr. Um, Barakat appreciates a great deal too. And I just want you guys to all know how proud we are of the surgeons that we have trained you to become. I next have the honor of presenting the Jean Gwen Faculty Teaching Award. This award is given in recognition of Dr. Jean Gwen, who was a Baylor faculty member, professor of surgery, and uh, former chief of vascular surgery at the VA. Um, I did not know Dr. Gwynn, but his teaching um, abilities are truly legendary for medical students and residents in, at Baylor College of Medicine. The Baylor College of Medicine entire general surgery residency selected a faculty member to receive this award and someone whose teaching abilities I can attest to from my times as a general surgery resident where he was my senior teaching me in the EC on the boards and in the operating room. Thank you, Brad and Ron, and uh, thank, congratulations to all of our graduates and our awardees. It's a phenomenal evening, and I uh, have the pleasure of um, capping it off with three special recognitions. Uh, the first is not an award, uh, although it's a, probably a lifetime achievement rec recognition, and, and that goes to a very special person to this department, that uh, is uh, Deb Taylor. Um, Deb has worked with our department before some people in this room were born, I have to say. <laughs> 33 years, uh, Deb taught Dr. DeBakey and Dr. Cooley how to take care of um, um, large animals. I won't say any more than that, um, but has been here forever, has trained many, many students, many, many residents. Uh, Deb, several years ago, we recognized you for, with the DeBakey Distinguished Service Award, which we're going to announce in a few minutes for someone else. Um, that is truly what you are. Uh, you have rendered distinguished service for your entire career with us. Thank you very much. Please come up. Uh, hi. Um, so I've been here a long time, and I've seen a lot of residents and a lot of fellows and a lot of faculty. And uh, I want to thank, first of all, Dr. Scott for coming to me one day after research, cardiovascular research was kind of winding down. He came to me one day and said, we need some equipment for 
uh, simulation. Can you help us find some equipment to, look, to teach residents laparoscopy? And I said, oh, well, I know where there is some, and I'll set it up for you, and we'll get it going. So that was kind of the beginning of simulation um, here. And, uh, and then Dr. Rosengart came shortly thereafter and uh, said, let's kick this up, make this a really good program, and uh, brought in the funds and the talent to help pull that together and gave me a, a great opportunity and a fabulous challenge to create a center. And uh, I hope I've done well. But it's really been a pleasure working with all the faculty all these years and seeing all these amazing kids come in green and learning surgery and graduating and going on to become great surgeons. And I really have enjoyed working with everyone, and I, I so appreciate it. And thanks to my husband for listening to all the crazy stories about what happened in the lab today. <laughs> so it's been great. Thank you. The last two awards are both, both very special. The first is called the uh, George Noon Professionalism Award. It's an award we began about seven years ago because there's nothing more important to be a successful physician and a surgeon is than your professionalism. There have been a, a number of great winners of the, the, this award over the last seven years. The winner this year is being recognized for slightly different reasons than um, our previous winners. Most of those have won because of what they do, because they're asked to do it, and they do it so well. In this case, um, this is a winner who wasn't asked, he asked. And about a year ago, um, this faculty member said, I want to help and I'm going to help in a way, any way that you want us to. And that's always a mistake to offer to help <laughs> any way you want. And uh, we put um, Dr. Sanjeev Vasudevan to work immediately, taking over our resident uh, research program, our research resident program. And he has been spectacular. I, I, I'm sure I speak for all of our research residents in saying not only has he worked above and beyond, he's done it with um, elegance and um, wonderful um, leadership in a way that um, really is a model for everyone who's worked with him. Uh, Sanjeev, I cannot thank you enough. I thank you on behalf of the entire department. Please come up. Uh, wow, I wasn't expecting this, but thank you very much, Dr. Rosengart. Uh, it's a true honor to uh, be in this department. I was in the chief resident's shoes a while ago, I guess I can say now. Um, but I've always been part of this family since 2001, and um, uh, I worked on Dr. Noon's service, so this is really special to me. And uh, thank you very much. It's quite an honor. Thank you. So our final award is the award that um, carries the greatest... Um, our fi final award is the award that carries um, the greatest distinction in the department, of course, because it's associated with Dr. DeBakey's name, and that's the DeBakey Distinguished Service Award for those who have given tremendous amounts to this department. Uh, this year's awardee is someone who has served um, really in a very quiet way, the, the silent hero, as we say. He is someone who has uh, been with our department for over 20 years. Uh, he has uh, led our VA Medical Center to be um, the largest and greatest surgery program in the entire VA national system. And he does it, again, um, with um, effectiveness um, in a way that makes us all proud, and I know in a way that makes his family and his friends proud. And again, most importantly, he does it with ask, without being asked and without being asked to be thanked. So Sam, we want to thank you and I'll give you this year's 2022 DeBakey Distinguished Service Award. Thank you. Absolutely. All I can say is, wow. Um, I want to thank Dr. Rosengard for the kind words he said. Um, I can't express to you my gratitude for this. Um, it has been, I've been at Baylor for 22 years. I can't believe that. I've seen many generations of residents grow, but I can tell you um, that the true testament for the greatness of this department and to be given this DeBakey Distinguished Service Award means the world to me, is that in his tradition and his honor of Dr. DeBakey, the fact that the department gives all incoming faculty an amazing opportunity not only to grow professionally, to grow their skill set, to grow their research programs, and to grow their administrative skills, 
And it's really been an amazing, amazing journey. Um, and um, just thrilled to be with the department, to be part of the department, and to help the department and help our faculty in uh, specifically at the VA, but throughout the rest of the department as well. Thank you again and a completely unexpected honor, and I really appreciate it. That's it. Um, congratulations, thank you, best of luck, let's stay close. Um, cannot thank everyone enough. Have a great evening and thank you for joining us. <laughs>